Hello folks, I had a little uh, question about uh, the boards that I used for prototyping on the last video that I did for the Flashing Light Prize 2018. A little quick entry there if you want to have a look at that. And um, so I just thought I'd do a little video about it. Um, I use different techniques uh, depending on what uh, floats my boat. So let's have a look at them. So obviously the, there's a sort of standard way to do stuff, um, particularly if it is just for real prototyping, just uh, proof of concept and see if things work, uh, is to use one of these, which is a solderless breadboard. I love these things. I, um, when I was um, younger, uh, I used to yearn after these because these used to be really, really expensive. And uh, I used to have... Um, Oh, I can't remember what they were called now, but uh, I used to have a little board which wasn't anywhere near as uh, complex as this, and uh, uh, it was S-Deck, I think it was called an S-Deck, and this was in the days of uh, quite long leaded components and, and whatnot, um, and these came out uh, quite a little bit later than, uh, <coughs> than when, I was, uh, when I was learning. Um, <coughs> But these are great. The only problem is, is you need to be careful because some of them, the quality of some of them is just awful. Um, particularly from the point of view that um, the uh, uh, some of the pins don't work and, and debugging it can be uh, can be a nightmare. But what I really do recommend is that you get a reasonable quality one and then uh, and go from there. Uh, in the UK, actually, I know that people are probably going to swear at me for doing this, but actually, I buy mine from uh, Maplin, which is the sort of equivalent of what was Radio Shack in the US. Uh, we have here in the UK, and uh, and actually, I, I have to say, I'm 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 pretty uh, just checking what we'll focus on there. Uh, I have to say, I'm quite impressed with with these boards. Don't generally have much of a problem with them, and of course, um, we can do all sorts of things on on these as. Uh, Here's an example here. I don't do much on Arduino, but sometimes uh, when someone's got an example working on Arduino, I bought something up on Arduino first. It's much there. Uh, so um, here's an Arduino. I don't know what this is. I think it's a is it a, is it a micro or a nano? Don't really know. It's um, and uh, then there's some other breadboarded parts. And you notice on here as well that uh, although there is a dip package on here. Um, as long as with the normal leaded resistors and whatnot, this looks like some sort of power supply thing because there's, a, there's a, a low resistance 3 watt resistor there. Um, a lot of parts now you can only get on um, uh, it's on surface mount. So of course, surface mount for these boards is is difficult. So uh, you have to you do have to get the hot pointy thing out. I'm afraid and do some soldering for those for, for quite a lot of parts these days. You can get away with it, but you're really limiting yourself as to uh, what parts you can use. And um, so I'll go on to the the bread uh, the um, breakout boards in a moment, but. Uh, Here's, that was one example there. I think this was some sort of um, constant current source thing that I was uh, working on. Um, here's another one. This is one I'm actually actively working on now. This is uh, uh, a um, it's basically a homebrew SMU source management unit, and the cat has just got up here. Thank you, thank you, and is now walking all over my parts, which is very good of him. And he can't get up to where he wants to go. Come on, come on, kitty. Come on. There he is. Okay, sorry, I've got everything ready to show you, and uh, the cat was walking all over it. So that's that, and uh, this is a little bit of a simpler one. So this is a, a board again, using one of, a board from Maplin, and uh, this has got a pick on it actually, and this is uh, an accelerometer gyro, and I've just got a um, working out an interface on there and uh, getting that working so uh, that's something I'm working on right now and you might see this in another project uh, later on. Uh, this is something which I built uh, a couple of years ago and <laughs> actually haven't taken it apart it's actually a, uh, an EEPROM programmer and I never actually got around to actually soldering it up so uh, probably use it maybe once a year that's it if that and uh, it's got a pick on here and uh, this is the ZIF socket on here and uh, used a program so uh, mm, 
yes, probably should have committed that uh, to something else. The reason I have this rather than a so so the actual EEPROM that wasn't quite an EEPROM. It's one of these Dallas semiconductors uh, NV RAM or NVS RAMs, and um, the programmers that I have don't support it, so uh, I had to build my own. So that's that one. Um, so those are the some examples of some of the breadboarding things that are doing. As, as I mentioned, it, it, you, know, you can do some pretty simple things on here. Here you go. Here's another little Arduino thing, which I think I was testing out. The uh, the this here is the accelerometer board, and I was testing it out on on here first. This had working code from somebody else, and, and I wanted to uh, run it on a pick, so I get it working on here first, and then worry about it uh, on the the sort of final. Uh, target uh, later. So there you go. So that's a whole bunch of stuff on uh, breadboarding uh, stuff. So let's move those out of the way. So those are solderless breadboards. Um, now the next one, this is quite an old sort of uh, technology if you like. Um, this is, um, well in the UK we call, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oops. There we go. Let's get the focus on. There we go. This is um, what we call in the UK Veriboard. Now, what this Veriboard is, it's similar to the strip board that you get in the States. Um, I'm not sure if I have an example. Oh, I do have an example of it. This is the stuff you get in the US, which, if you look underneath, uh, none of the pads are actually joined up. Um, and it's up to you to join them up later. So, that's another option. Um, I was brought up on Veriboard. Now in Veriboard, uh, the strips are actually joined up for you. This is a special kind which was designed for, for DIP devices and um, you'll see that there is a, a cut going through every third uh, strip so um, that means you can add parts. Now uh, typically people use Veriboard and also this uh, this US strip board for um, uh, through hole components and uh, certainly I think this one's I know there are some surface mount on here um, I've actually found nowadays that I, I use mostly um, for discretes anyway mostly use um, surface mount and uh, I'm not sure if you can see on here see if I can get a pokey pokey thing uh, maybe I should have got the macro lens out there's a there's quite a big cap there if you can see it, uh, there's a voltage regulator surface mount. This is a through hole part, which I'm assuming it's because I uh, couldn't get the wires easily enough. So basically, it's it's a whole hybrid thing of so there's another surface mount cap there. Uh, looks like a diode there, probably a reverse protection diode going on there. And then you've got your big surface mount uh, pick device here that I was using here, and a crystal and a programming header. Don't know what that was for, but there you go. Um, Pick 32. Wow, amazing. Um, so that's uh, an example of that. And uh, see here, here's another example that I have here. This had a lot of uh, stuff on the back, uh, lots of parts on the back. That was another one for the flashing light prize recently for 2017. Here's another one. Uh, this here is a bit of a dog's dinner to be honest. Uh, I think I did this all out of leaded components. Again, it's using this ferro board with the uh, triple, um, the, I'm not quite sure what they call it, but this, the traditional bearer board just has no brakes across here, so there it's just a, a, a long line, and it's up to you, and there's a special tool that you can use, which I bet I'm not going to be able to find now. Here we go, I did, amazing. Special tool you can use. Uh, which you can use to you pop in here and then you turn it around and it uh, breaks the track. To be honest with you, you're probably better off with a drill bit. Um, I, I used to use a drill bit rather than this. Uh, this is just uh, more trouble than it's worth, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, I think it's almost it. Here you go. Here's a uh, here's another one. Uh, this one here, for what it's worth, this is. Um, uh, a mode S receiver for aircraft uh, telemetry and uh, so although almost all of this I'm assuming there's no surface, oh no there is a bit of surface mount on here, can't lie, it's uh, some caps and uh, voltage regulator diode there, stop your reverse polarity protection. Um, I think there's some, there you go, Max 232 as a pick here 
and uh, I think some op amps there, or comparators. And this here is the RF bit. Now that's this is the big problem with uh, with this sort of uh, strip board um, is that they're just it's just useless for anything over um, about sort of 30, 50 megahertz, something like that. This is at a gigahertz, so um, uh, you need to have controlled impedances and and so on and so forth. So um, I. This has got things like saw filters on here, some amp front end amplifiers. Uh, I think this is a log amp, logarithmic amplifier, analog devices. So um, typically, I'll make these uh, boards up myself and uh, lay them out and uh, and uh, get all the chemicals out and whatnot. So that sort of leads me on to the next way that I. Have done prototyping. This is a his, this is the way sort of historically I've done it. Um, I've got a stack of examples here. Let's see what these. Here we go. Here's one. So I think this was a, a pit control power supply, as I remember. Um, or was it? I'm not sure. There's not. Oh no, there is an inductor on there in the back. Okay, so. Um, this is a board that I made up. Now, what I should mention to you is I typically, although these these are actually double-sided, and uh, so, although what I would say is when I lay out, I predominantly lay everything out on the top, if at all possible, and flood fill a ground layer. And this is the back of it. And you'll see here that um, I've used the whole of the back as a, as a ground plane. And what I've done where You've got through hole components. What few I tend to avoid through hole components, but there's a header here, and there's a, a dual inline uh, socket here. What I do is I uh, use a drill to just make sure that these pins, as they go through, don't uh, don't connect because that's not what we want. Unless, of course, they are actually a ground. So that's uh, one of those. And uh, although this isn't particularly fine pitch on here, I think there's a as an SOC so that's like point. Uh, 05 inch pitch. There's um looks like there's a an SOT um, 23 on there, which I think is is that one millimeter. Anyway, whatever. It's finer pitch. Um, I can go smaller. Um, now this here, I'm not quite sure what this is actually. It's ah, it's a this is a a pick base surface uh, mount power supply. I think this is half millimetre pitch. I have got some here which are absolutely definitely half millimetre pitch. Uh, if you just bear with me. There we go. This is a half millimetre pitch board. This is, um, this also has a, uh, and this is 2.4 gigahertz. This was not a success. Um, I was working on some Wi Fi uh, stuff. Now I am actually an RF guy, and uh, 2.4 gig. I've been working on 2.4 gigs before Wi-Fi was uh, was around. So, um, but I had problems with the actual microcontroller unit. This is a Texas Instruments uh, jobby, and uh, I couldn't even get the thing to properly boot up. I tried all sorts of things on the layout and whatnot, and changing the crystals and uh, so on and so forth couldn't actually get anywhere anyway cut long story short uh, gave that up as a bad job so you can do half millimetre pitch on these uh, with some some degree of success now what I'm looking for here it is now here's another one this here is a BGA now, this I have to say I do not recommend that you do. Um, I don't know if you can see here, there's a little BGA here. I don't know what the size of that is. It's a 3x3 three three BGA. I think it was on half millimetre pitch. 3x3 um, three three on here. And lay the ball out and wherever. It looked fine. There's a big problem of putting BGAs on homebrew PCBs. Um, you can see this is just a solid back ground plane. And... <clears throat> This is an audio amplifier, uh, class D audio amp, by the way. Amazing what you can get on such a small chip. And um, uh, yeah, here's a, here's a loudspeaker for it. So the big problem is, is, is that, generally speaking, people don't have a solder mask. 
and BGAs have to have a solder mask. It's just trying to get these things to solder without a solder mask. It, you just, it's just not going to work, I'm afraid. Just, just forget it. No, it's not going to happen. I mean, I don't know if there's an option that you could use with Kapton tape, if you could maybe cut out the holes in Kapton tape or something and then um, uh, stick that down and uh, and do it that way. But anyway, whatever. Th this this took about three three attempts. Um, what I should have done, by the way... Oh, I wasn't going to do this. There's another video I have. What I should have done... Uh, if you if you want to do BGAs and uh, and whatnot is is that it should have done this now actually I'm just going to see if I can show you how small that chip was I'm going to have to do a refocusing job here if it is going to focus I haven't got my macro lens on so it's not going to happen is it let me see if I can do a manual focus on it there. So you can see just how small that device is. Let's get my there it is. Tiny little thing. So let's show you this one. This is a breakout. This is since uh, seen better days, but uh, you see I have a programming header that I set up for it and everything. This is a, an NXP device. It's not. This is actually uh, there's a video about how I how I made this up. Let's see if we can focus on that one. So there you go, that's, um, that's another thing you can do is you can actually turn the chip upside down. I think this is about half millimetre and then use a breakout board to, um, to do it. So that's another way of prototyping. I think that took about 40 minutes to, to break out. So I use magnet wire for this. This wire has uh, got a, a, uh, an outer sheath which if you just uh, uh, solder it, um, you tin it at the, to begin with and uh, the solder it will just uh, get rid of the, um, I'm not sure it's enamel or what it is, but uh, it will remove it so it means you can solder it, but that took quite a long time to do. So you can do it, but um, frankly uh, BGAs you really need to have a professionally made board and um, go out to a house, a board house that will actually make those things for you. So that's a few of those examples. Some more here. There you go. As you can see I use them a lot for <coughs> RF. So and also surface uh, power supplies such as these, I hope this is in focus. There we go. Should press my AF really, shouldn't I? So, um, yeah, as you can see, there's um, lots of inductors on here, and uh, so RF, a couple of switch mode power supplies. Here's another switch mode power supply. The benefit of doing it, doing your, your switch mount switch mode power supplies on PCBs is that you've got a solid ground plane so that uh, you've got a nice low inductance path which uh, is uh, extremely useful. So that's those ones done. Um, so I'm going to show you some other little options as well. Here's here's another option that we, you can use. These are called smart boards and these are a type of breakout board. Now um, the reason why I like these breakout boards compared to the normal ones that uh, you sort of see on eBay is they actually have a solid ground plane on the back. So if you've got a, uh, not in this particular case because this is a QFP, but if, you, or if you've got a QFN, which generally have um, uh, pads on the back connected to ground, uh, or you, there some QFPs do have um, uh, a ground pad, it's possible to actually solder them, get a nice low impedance, and also across the whole board, so that uh, you've got a nice solid copper ground plane for them. So um, that's uh, kind of useful in uh, sort of, low frequency RF so don't, we don't need too much sensitivity and um, yeah it's it's okay and uh, I've had an enormous amount of success on it and uh, so here are some other, other ones um, got dozens of these little basically what I call unit testing I think a lot of people call, me, call it unit testing actually but um, 
it then goes from the sort of sublime to the ridiculous. So, so here's a. This is a prototype for a product that I did, uh, which was pretty successful in the end. And here's another one. So you can see I do use these smart boards quite a bit. They're not cheap, not the cheapest, should I say, but uh, as I say, they get the job done from a breakout perspective. And of course, there's, there's nothing actually to stop you from I'm doing a sort of a hybrid, so here you go. So I've got a board here. This is actually just there's nothing here. I'm just using it as a, as a backing, and um, you can see here there's a little piggyback board that I've got on here. I can't even remember what that's for. It's possibly an op amp, I, I guess, that I've popped on there. Um, and uh, you see a lot of this stuff is mixed signal, so there'll be a processor in here, some probably an A to D converter there, I would imagine. Um, yeah, things things start getting a bit silly here. So there we go. Here's another one. So uh, again, I'm just using this board just as a, a somewhere to put all the uh, various breakout boards, really. And this is a part of a of a uh, device that uh, I use to uh, which does which is serious RF. So uh, that had to be uh, properly laid out and everything. And I'm just sort of poking in the digital bits into it and so on and so forth. And yeah, that on there. I think there was an Ethernet on there. Yeah, there's an Ethernet Ethernet port on there as well. Um, yeah, there's another one. Uh, Ethernet processor. Oh goodness, uh, I think it's a QFN as well. Yeah, wow. Well, okay, all sorts of stuff. And um, as well as smart boards, there are other other breakouts that you can get. So this is from. Proto Advantage. Um, this is they tend to have a better selection of boards, but they don't have the benefit of the um, the ground plane uh, being extended. So uh, just be aware of that. I mean, this works. This is a big pick, 144 pin pick, 0.5 millimeter pitch, and these picks actually had a uh, the internal oscillator didn't work, so you have to use an external oscillator, which is what uh, this little back board is on there for to uh, help you with that and uh, I'll just show you some other breakout boards I have bags and can never have enough so for example these are all my dip breakout boards so I've got all sorts and they're all bagged up and so I know which is which is which and so on and um, I get through these pretty regularly probably one, one or two a day so those are my, my SOICs, uh, firstly a single, a single uh, so they're, they're essentially the sort of shrunk jewel in line thingies. Um, here you go, here's a bunch of smart boards as well. Uh, and so you can chop up the smart boards as well and then you don't need to use the whole, the whole board. There you go, some more there. So these are non-smart boards. These are quite handy as well. So again, have a have a good selection of these. These are the cheaper ones. They're okay for sort of uh, digital stuff, but um, I wouldn't want to put any uh, analog stuff on them because they, they don't have uh, the ground plane that the uh, smart boards do. So again, there's a there's a whole selection of different um, different sizes. There's a few of them do um, will support QFNs and QFPs as uh, on as a dual inline thing. The benefit of, of being able to put your um, device on dual inline, um, convert it into a dual inline, is just that you can put it on, on the um, this breadboard stuff, which uh, obviously is quite beneficial. So. That's an example of some of the break boards, the breakout boards that I have. Um, so, oh, a couple of other things that, that I tend to have. Um, I'm lucky enough to, to go to Japan sometimes, so I have breakout boards for things like uh, uh, SD cards, some breakout boards there for uh, Ethernet. Um, these are for USB connectors. There's a mega. What's this? This does. This is a massive one. This one. This is a Q, This does QFP 128 to 240 at half millimeter pitch. 
Blimey, I think I got that from Fry's in the States actually. So yeah, I have a good selection going in there because there's nothing worse than the project comes to a halt and you don't have any means of prototyping. So I work with a whole bunch of other options as well in there. So that's that. But I want to um, actually show you something else in particular, which um, is something that the way that I've been prototyping now for uh, for a few a few months. And I bet I'm not going to be able to find it now. There it is. So that last flashing light prize entry, I was, I was asked a question about what this board is. Now this stuff uh, is what I'm using pretty extensively now, and it's. Um, this is the stuff. I get it from Mauser when I'm doing an order. Um, maybe add one or two of these in. And uh, the beauty of this stuff is, is it looks like the old stuff that uh, we used to use um, for the strip board if you want to find it. So it, it sort of looks like this. Um, but there's one uh, thing, there's, there's, all not, there's not holes everywhere. So this is actually pretty good for surface mount, although this is only 0.1 inch pitch, so you might think, well, that's not so great, is it? Well, it's not for if you want to put uh, surface mount chips dr uh, directly on it, of course. But the big, big advantage of this is it's got a solid copper ground plane. So this is standard FR4, 1.6 millimeter, 0.1 inch pitch, and then the way that you can make the ground plane is you just put a piece of wire through the little hole here, solder it to the back side, solder it on the other side, bobs your uncle, and if you already your chips in such a way, your, your components in such a way to take advantage of that, you don't generally need to have very long um, wires uh, finding the ground, so um, you'll see that actually there isn't that much evidence of sort of a long ground wires going all over the place here, so um, that's, uh, that's that. You'll notice that I've got plenty of other ones like that as well. Um, it's something I'm working on at the moment. Um, that's done in the same way. Again, that's a solid copper ground plane. And there's another one here. Anyway, there's tons of them uh, that I use. And one thing that I also use is they've got different sizes as well. So if you did want to use... Um, so excited size chips which are 0.05 millimeter pitch um, you can do that as well and uh, so this is uh, another this is uh, an example that I had for last year's flashing light prize so I keep going on about that but that was the reason why I was asked a question um, thing is there's, there's no commercial problem about me telling you how this, the flashing light prize entries work so I can quite easily just show you what these are all about so let's see if we can to get the focus right here let's press the auto focus on here there you go. right so you'll see here this is on the 0.05 millimeter pitch and so you've got an 8 pin Soic here uh, I think that's a SOT23 there, is it a transistor or something? Oh, it's actually a, a little heat sink tab on there, but I think there is a SOT to the diode there. Somewhere, oh yeah, there you go, SOT23, I think that's a pick there. Uh, so yeah, you can do some pretty um, high density stuff on these boards, and again, it's... I don't know why this is tarnished, I just put it through the... Um, ultrasonic cleaner and it's still got tarnish on it uh, like as I try cleaning it up a bit it's, it's, it's just surface detritus so I'm not quite sure what that's all about anyway whatever that's not what the video is for this stuff is uh, quite thin though I think it's about 0.8 millimeter and uh, I'll get your bulk. documentation out for these let's say that's one of them let's just zoom out a bit that's the this is the point one by point one. I'm gonna just get the autofocus working. There. This is the the other one. There we go. So they're both so they both come basically in the same size package. Uh, I think what is it? Is this a standard DIN size? It looks like that map. It's about 10 centimetres by 
16 centimeters. Yeah, standard Euro card size. Okay, brilliant. So um, there's two two types that I use. There are a number of other ones, but um, yeah. So these uh, this is what I've started using quite extensively, and I can recommend them for uh, mixed signal stuff and. Um, um, power supplies uh, because they've got this sort of ground plane, so they've got a low impedance uh, to ground, and I get them from Mauser. So that's the uh, that's what I use. It's not the cheapest, again, um, but it's not horrendously expensive. And uh, bearing in mind, that actually, you can put quite a lot on a board these days. Um, I, I thoroughly recommend them. Okay, so those uh, that's what I use for my uh, prototyping bits and pieces. And uh, thanks ever so much for watching. Cheers.